اليوم الدرس الجديد وما هو الدرس الجديد اليوم ما هو رقم what is the number of the new lesson الدرس الرابع الدرس الرابع نعم أيوة الدرس الرابع okay الدرس الرابع fourth lesson so نحن في أي صفحة كنشكا أي صفحة صفحة رقم سبعة سبعة نعم very good seven page number seven okay so first English size now English size brother Ashan can you read this in English in this lesson in this lesson we will learn the use of preposition mm. Arabic nouns have ending to show their function in the sentences mm. the normal ending of noun is U as in uh, the house is new al baytu jadidun jadidun al baytu jadidun a noun with the normal ending is said to be nominative case in arabic it is called marfuq marfu 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 and the and the last letter ain marfu marfu after a preposition this ending changes to I E how this is E E ending E ending for example Al Baytu the house feel feel Bayti you can read you can read the Arabic Arabic okay Al Baytu في البيت في البيت so البيت becomes في البيت without في the ending was دمّا البيت when you put في that is preposition it changed the ending ending and it became في البيت T so from البيت في البيت and why this ending of E sound because of في Fee is a preposition. Fee is a preposition. Fee by name. No. Fee by because you want to make it a definite house. If you want to say the indefinite fee by name in any house, then you will leave it without. I'll use a fee by name. Ah. So ah uh, ah. Uh, if you say a house with a by name, then it will become. Fee Baitin. Yes. So now here the second example, brother Babar, it that was you were asking. Fee Baitin. Baitun. Ha. It became Fee Baitin. Did you see the under the difference? The first example Al Baitu. So Al Baitu with Al that is definite article. So from Al Baitu became Fil Baiti. Fil Baiti. Still indefinite. हाँ, still it is there because albaytu was definite already. You added preposition, so it became fil bayti. In the second example, the word, the noun was baytun, indefinite. When you added fi, it became fi baytin. Fi baytin. The second example. Tell them that they should leave. It is destruction. Al Maktabu. Al Maktabu. Al Al Maktabi. Okay. Al Maktabu. That was the normal ending. Without preposition, normal ending. Al Maktabu. And when you put ala, that is preposition, it became ala al maktabi on the desk. So this is the grammar actually. This fi or ala, they are called prepositions. Okay, cannot see. Okay. Ah, can you move this further back? A little bit back and tilt them so that. Well, 
can move your uh, tables also. Okay, I can now it is good. So one is fee and one is ala. This is al maktab. So just <coughs> the word al maktab is ending <coughs> on dhamma, right? Every Arabic word, if does not have any preposition or anything before that, normal ending always will be Dhamma ending. Like by default. Normal ending is Dhamma ending. When we have uh, prepositions, so this uh, Dhamma changes into Kasra. Now you put this fee before Al Maktab. Uh -huh. So now, or uh, for For al maktab we should use ala. So now this dhamma is gone and it's replaced by kasra. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this is the effect of ala or the second example could be fil bayti, fil masjidi. Min. Min is, uh, huh? min means from. Min al masjidi, min al bayti, min al maktabi. So, inshallah, later on you will also learn all those prepositions. But uh, altogether, they are 17. They are 17. 17 prepositions? 17 prepositions. Those who make this effect on the noun. So, they make uh, from Dhamma to Kasra ending. What's the literal meaning of marfu? Ha, marfu, anything that is ending on dhamma, yes. that is called marfu. Yes. yes. And there has to be a noun. Yes. It is, we all talk, we are talking about all the nouns over here. So, noun prepositions. We did not start the verb yet okay. in this book. Okay. When we switch to the next book, the other book, the university book, there are verbs also. So, inshallah, we will learn the verbs from, from there. Okay. So, is there any question? Everything is clear about the function of the preposition? So, that is our topic of today. We need to continue. Okay. Arabic nouns have endings to show their functions in the sentence. The normal ending of a noun is you like al maktabu that is normal ending and that uh, normal ending is called marfu marfu right after a preposition this ending changes into e ending so al baitu it becomes fil bayti baitun becomes fi baitin or al maktabu it becomes al al maktabi now yes now continue okay a, a noun preceded by a preposition is said to be a genitive case in Arabic majroor. Majroor. Hmm. Okay. So these endings, the same way that you learn the name marfu, right? With dhamma ending. Now when it became kasra ending, it is called majroor. Genitive case. Okay. Majroor. And you should be familiar with the terminologies of uh, marfu and majroor and mansu. The third one will be mansu. It will come later. So right now, just learn one by one. Okay. And also know the name of prepositions. Because preposition is the English term. In Arabic we call it jar. 
حرف جار Boys, we have a class over here. We do not want any disruption. Father, I'll just give him the same thing. Can you give an example of Majroor? The same thing. When Al Maktabu, it became Al Maktabi, it is Majroor. So, any ending with the Kasra, it is called Majroor. Okay. Yes. In this lesson, we also learn the two pronouns, hua, he, or it, it, mm. and he, she, or here, it. here, 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 mm. here, she, she or, or it. it. Mm. In Arabic, all nouns are either masculine or feminine. Mm. A masculine noun is referred to by the pronoun hua. Yeah. Whether it is generated by a human being or an animal or a thing. For yeah. example, where is the boy? Ainul Walad. Ainul. Ainul Walad. Ah. And he is in the, in the mosque. Hua fil masjid. Okay, very good. Now, this is the second point of today's lesson that in Arabic we have pronouns also. Same way as we have in English, in any language, we have noun and pronoun. So, when we make sentence first time, we use the noun. Like, Ain al-Walad, where is the boy? So, al-Walad is a noun. Now, in the second sentence, when you refer to the same person, then you use pronoun. So, you want to say that he is in the masjid. So, it's a hua. Instead of saying again, al waladu fil masjid, you say hua fil masjid. So, hua is for male person and hia is for female, for the meaning of she. So, same way in English we have he and she, in Arabic we say hua and hia. Now, another point. Uh, in Arabic, <coughs> there is no word... <coughs> Either human being or non-human non -human being, that is, non-gendered word. All the words, they have a gender. Okay, so this table also, <coughs> has in, in its word, is a gender. The chair also has a gender. The fan also has a gender. So all the words, all the nouns in Arabic, they have gender, either human beings or non-human beings. So we cannot translate in Arabic as it. In English, most of the time, for the non-human things, we use it. It is over there, it is over there. It is not the case in Arabic. So either in Arabic you say hua or you say hiya. And what is the Arabic term for pronoun? Damir. Damir. Dad, Mim, Ya, Ra. You write like that. Da, meem, yara. In Urdu, we use this word damir for the heart. Right? <laughs> so, uh, uh, in Arabic, uh, word for the pronoun is damir. And Conscious? Yes. <laughs> yeah, most of the words in Urdu with the letter da, they are pronounced with za, sound, yes. Yes, in Urdu grammar also, it is known as damir, or that we call it zamir. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, ayn al-waladu huwa fil masjid, that is pronoun huwa. If you aunt ayn al-kitab, where is the book? How do you say that is on the table? Huwa al al so, Al-Kitab, though it is non-human being, non-human, but because there is no it in Arabic, you will say Hua. Kitab is masculine. Kitab is masculine. If you ask about the car, for example, Aina Sayyara, where is the car? Here? Here, Hina. Here, Hina. Okay. It is here. Or here, Fishare. It is on the street. Here is the Mawqif of the Sayyarat. Al-Mawqif. Mawqif is parking lot. Parking lot. 
Okay. So turn the page. Okay, so brother Ridwan, now you read the other examples. Ain al kitab. Where is the book? Huwa al al maktub. 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 It is on the table. And a feminine noun is referred to by pronoun hiya. Mm. Whether it denotes a human being, an animal, or a thing. Mm. Example, Aina Amina, mm. where is Amina? Hiya fil bait, she is in the house. Yes. Aina Saha, mm. where is the watch? Hiya mm. Aras Sarif, mm. it is on the bed. Very good. So these are same examples for feminine gender. Before that, you had the examples of masculine gender. Aina al Walad, Aina al Kitab. Here, Aina Amina, Aina Saa. Yes, continue reading. Most feminine nouns end with a round ta. Ta marbuta. Ta marbuta. But there are some which do not have any special ending. Okay. Now, this is a third point. Listen carefully. This is a third point. Most of Arabic nouns, they are feminine. They are and on tamarbuta. Okay, this tamarbuta. So this tamarbuta is a feminine marker. If you see tamarbuta in the end, think that this is a feminine gender. Though this is not the criteria, there is exception. Some names are male names. They are ending on tamarbuta also. So do not. Take it as 100%. For example, the name Talha, right? Talha is a male name, but it is ending on Ta Marbuta. The name Usama, the name Hamza, they are all ending on Ta Marbuta, but they are male names. Mm. So we have exceptions. But more than 90%, the names, those who are ending on Ta Marbuta, they will be feminine names. Okay, so make a uh, note, write down this point that most of the feminine names they end on Tamarbuta, Ramta. At the same time, keep the exception in your mind that this is not 100%, there are exceptions. And I gave you the examples of Talha, Hamza, Usama, now. Sarir is not feminine gender. Uh, yeah, so actually, it, it actually, I mean, no, thing, uh, the, I think you are seeing here over there, right? Okay. But here is pointing to the watch. Okay. Here, as, because the question was about the watch, where is the watch? Here in Asa. Okay. So the answer was here al sarir So the sarir the word sarir itself, it is a masculine gender. If you ask, where is the bed? Ain as sarir Then you will say, huwa. Huwa fil bayi. Got the difference? Okay. So, now we were talking about the feminine gender, right? And the tamarbuta is the feminine marker. But, another thing is that there are many feminine names, they do not have tamarbuta in the end. And still they are feminine. Okay? Example. Example, the name of Zainab. The name Zainab. The name Maryam. Hmm? Salma. The name Salma. Mm -hmm. They are all ending. There is no Tamarbuta in the end, but they are feminine. Um. Hmm? Um, um. um Kulsum. Um yes, Um Kulsum. Or Um Umar. Uh -huh. hmm? But in that case, Um basically pointing to a female. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, of course. But that's only for proper names. Proper names, yes. Otherwise, the Tamar would have There could be some names that they are not uh, the proper names, and they could be also without Tamar Muta. For example, the word Shams. Shams means sun. It does not have Tamar Muta, but this is a feminine gender in Arabic. Mm -hmm. uh. In the story of Ibrahim, -salam, when he saw one night a star, then he saw the moon, then he saw the sun. 
So he says, فَلَمَّا رَأَ الشَّمْسَ بَازِغَةً بَازِغَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought the adjective for the shams, bazigha. Bazigha means open, bright open. That is feminine. Because the word shams is feminine. 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 The word jahannam, for example, al-riyazu billah. A jahannam word is also a feminine gender. Whenever you will find in the Quran this word, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred with the feminine pronoun. Like uh, yaslawna ha. Allah says they are, will be entering into it. So Allah brought ha, pronoun. And ha is for feminine. So there are other words. But these are all exceptions. And inshallah when you will go in advanced level of the grammar, you will learn about more about this feminine gender. There are two types of feminine gender in Arabic. One is called Mu'annas Qiyasi and one is called Mu'annas Sima'i. Sima'i means from hearing. So there is no criteria for them. We cannot understand the reason why they are feminine. But we are using them because the people of the language, Arab people, they have been using it as the feminine. So that's why they are called Sima'i, just by hearing. There is no rule for that. It just that, made into a... Uh, right, right. So Jahanna, oh. one of them? Yes, yes, it's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, complete, uh, Brother Babar, you read the note. We have learned. Okay, note. We have learned that Tanween is the indefinite, indefinite article. Mm. Example, Baiton. Mm. A house. Mm. This rule does not apply to proper nouns. Mm. So Hamidun is just Hamid, not Ahamid. Yes. I explained it this very first day also. Mm -hmm. That when you have Tanveen in the end, on indefinite nouns, you translate a house, a pen, a book. But if the proper nouns, they are already definite. If they are ending on Tanveen, you do not say a Hamid or one Hamid. Okay, next point. Feminine proper nouns have no tanwi. Ah. Yes, this is also very important grammar. And most Arab people also, they are not aware of this rule oh. if they do not learn it. And that's why they make mistake in uh, pronouncing. So the name Fatima, the name Amina, the name Zainab, it cannot have tanwi. We cannot say Fatimatun, Aminatun, Zainabun, no. It will be only one haraka ending. Fatima. Fa Fatimatu or Fatimata. This, these names do not take Kasra also. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it cannot be Fatimati, Zainabi, Mariami. It cannot be. If there is a preposition before the name, a uh, Fatima, you will say, Bi Fatima Ta. Bi, Bi is a preposition. Like if you say, I passed by Fatima, right? So, Marar Tu Bi Fatima Ta, not Bi Fatima Ti. Okay. So, Inshallah, actually, this rule also belongs to the advanced grammar. I'm not going in detail, but. Uh, let me just give you a hint for that time when it will come, you will be prepared, you will be ready. That there are nine reasons for Arabic words, they do not accept Tanween or Kasra. Okay? Nine types of noun in Arabic, they do not accept Tanween or Kasra. So, uh, these proper female names also one of those reasons. So it has to be a female name. Yes, female name. So feminine proper nouns. So that, remind, remember two things. It should be feminine. It should be proper noun. You cannot use uh, this rule for the car. A sayyara. Because it's not a proper it's noun. It's not a proper noun. Yeah. And not for Hamid also. Hamid. Not for Hamid because Hamid is not a feminine name. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, now vocabulary. Brother Hassan, you read vocabulary. <coughs> Some new words for you today, inshallah. Hmm. Ala, uh -uh. on, 
Okay, Allah means on. Okay, say Al Mirhab. This is Arabic class. We do not pronounce Dad as Za. Dad is Dad. Al Mirhab. Al Mirhab is toilet. Al Hammam. Bathroom. Al Sama. Sky. Aina. Where? Al Matbakh. Kitchen. Al Fasl. Al Fasl. So this is our class, Arabic class. You can say Hada Al Faslul Arabi. This is Arabic class. So Al Fasl is class or classroom. There is another word for the same meaning that is As Saf. Saf. The same way we have Saf in the prayer. That is also known. In modern Arabic as classroom. No, no, soft, soft. No, no, no. That's that's just English. English, you have to say classroom. But in Arabic, no. You can either say soft or fast. That's it. Okay. Okay. So, I think lesson number four has two parts. And this was only lesson four. Next time we have lesson four A. Mm. So that will be like uh, an addendum of lesson four, <laughs> where you will learn more pronouns, I believe. Khair, mm inshallah. -hmm. Go to the Arabic portion. Okay, just from the recap of last class, did you understand Shamsi letters and Qamari letters very well? Mm -hmm. Always remember 14 and 14. What was the hint for that brother Hassan? Mm -hmm. How do you recognize the Shamsi letters? When you pronounce them, what happens? You keep the uh, tashtik. Say at uh -huh. You don't pronounce the al. Mm -hmm. Yes. You, don't pronounce you, you do not pronounce al. Yes. The lamb merged into Merge the following letter. Oh, yeah. ah, but what is the alamat? The tongue touches. Tip of the tongue. Tip of the tongue. Yes. Tip of the tongue touches on the teeth. On the upper part, upper part of, the teeth. of your teeth. Or you can just say where when the tip of the tongue is involved in, in the, in the pronunciation. Yes. So always remember those uh, Shamsi letters and Qamari letters. Okay. Now Darsul Rabe. So one person uh, read this Arabic page at Darsul Rabe, Al Baitu Fil Baiti. This time maybe from Sister Sai. Read it. Al Baitu Fil Baiti. Al Masjidu, 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 Al Mas Marfu. 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 Naam. And what was the terminology for Kasra ending? Majroor. Majroor. Very good. Okay. Brother Umar, you read the next part. Aina Muhammad. Aina Muhammad. Hua fil khurfa. Wa aina Yasir. Hua fil hammam. Wa aina Amina. Hia fil matbakh. Aina al kitab. هو على المكتب وأين الساعة هي على السرير. Very good. Now I'm giving you this next تمرين as your homework. What is the instruction? Read in Arabic, Omar. أجيب عن الأسئلة. أجيب عن الأسئلة الآتية. 
Very good. Ajib anil as'ilatil atiyah. Now, do you remember from last lesson the meaning of al atiyah? Following. Yes, atiyah means following. As'ila? Questions. Ah, as'ila is questions. As'ila is a singular or plural? Plural. Uh, plural. Plural. What is the singular? Sual. Sual. Sual, question, many, jama, as'ila. As'ila. And ajib means? Uh, answer. Answer. So ajib, answer. The following question. The following questions. questions. Okay? Mm. So ainal kitab, and then you will write it. And I want it on the paper. On oh. the sheet of paper, this homework. Okay? So we have 11 questions. Aina al-kitab, Aina Muhammad, Aina al-Sa'a, Aina Yasir, Aina Amina. Okay. Uh, sister Mubin, read sixth one after Aina Amina. And you listen carefully, all of you. Gurfa, hmm. okay. We have two Hamza over there. Uh, 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 yes. Uh, uh, Gurfa. Very good. Uh, uh, so remember that the first Hamza is for what? For question. For question. Is Amina in the room? Huh? Is that what it means? Is Amina in the room? Is Amina in the room? Yes. Uh, Amina to fil Gurfa. Is Amina in the room? Okay. Then, uh, sister on the second table. Read the seventh one. Ayasir Mutba. Very good. How do you translate it? Is Yasir in the kitchen? Yes. Is Yasir in the kitchen? Very good. Yes, next sister. Read the eighth. Manfil Urfati. Or Manfil Urfa. How do you translate? Who is in the room? Urfa is the room. Okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, is so it bedroom or just uh, any, any and just the room. Uh, then we have additions. If you want to specify bedroom, it becomes ghurfatun noun. Ghurfat an noun. Ghurfatul julus, like living room. Living room. Uh, so, uh, and brother Norman, read the ninth one. Women fill hammam. Not men. Women fill hammam. Men, women fill hammam. And and who is in the bathroom? And who is in the bathroom? Women fill hammam. Brother Kanishka, next one. Mada al al maktabi. Al al maktab. Al al maktab. Mada al al maktab. Yeah, read it as the questioning tone. Mada al maktab. Hmm. How do you translate? Uh, what is on the table? Yes, very good. What is on the table? Mada and like ma. What? Al al maktab on the table. What is on the table? Well, sometimes they say mahaza. Uh -huh. Is that the same thing? What is no, this? no. Mahaza means what is this? Mahaza al al maktab. Mm -hmm. No, no. There is no need to say haza over there. Just either say, if I am asking, if I don't know this thing and I ask Mahaza, what is this? Then you use Mahaza. Here the question, what is on the table? What is that? So you say Mahaza. Mahaza. Ah. This uh, Hamza that you use, uh, Ayas, Ayas, uh -huh. Mahaza, uh -huh. is it only in writing or conversation because those pins there are CD? Uh -huh. They just say, okay. they yes. say anti Arabic, so uh -huh. they don't use the Hamza. Mm -hmm. Yes, in spoken Arabic, they don't use it because you can make a question by questioning intonation, by changing your tone. So, uh, so this is just writing. Writing, right? In more writing, yes. Okay. Now, brother Arshad, read okay. the next one. Maza uh, al sarir. Say again, maza. Maza al sarir. Al sarir. Al sarir. No. Plus. What is on the table? On the bed? What is on the bed? Yes. Okay. So, inshallah, you can make this homework. Inshallah. Ajib anir asilatil atiyah.
Now, the next tamreen is for reading. So, Brother Norman, try to read that instruction. Ikra, waktu mal takti awakir kalimat. Okay. Now, if you remember, last Sunday also we had the same direction. Instruction for the question in unit 3. Do you remember what is has been asked over here? Read and write. Read and write. With the correct ending. With the correct ending. Very good. With the correct ending of the words. Of the words. So now, this is the challenge for you. You have one noun without preposition. Normal ending. And one word with the preposition. So how do you... So let me ask and go one by one. Brother Babar. Al Mother Al Mother Satu. Not Mother Sa. Mad Rasa. Al Mad Rasatu. Ah. And next? Fil Mad Rasati. Very good. Perfect. Now uh Apari, Brother Duan. Next. Fil Baiti. Ah. Al Baitu. Very good. Perfect. Brother Hassan. Uh, al Urfat. Al Urfatu. Al Urfatu. Al Hammamu. Fil Matahi. Fil Matahi. Very good. Next, Brother Omar. Al Maktabu. Al Maktabi. Very good. Okay, next, Sister. Al Amal Kursi. Al Sarim. Okay. How, if you will disclose the ending, how do you say Al Sari? What? Asariru. Naam Asariru. Yes. Naam, sister. Alal Kitab. Sir. What? Alal Kitab. Hmm. Alal Kitab. Alal Kitabi. B. Yes, because of Allah. Next. Fil Masjidi. Fil Masjidi. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Very good. So do you have to hear this B? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, really? Ah. Fil Masjidi. Naam, Naam. Because so, you are in this learning process. So Once you, you learn the grammar, then there is no need. So when you speak it, what do you say? Al Masjidi? When you're talking to Nathan? No, no, just Al Masjid. Al Masjid. Or, or, or Fil Masjid? Ha, Fil Masjid, no. But you, when you write it, you say. Fil Masjidi. The, the right way is to say Fil Masjidi. No, both are right ways. In uh, writing, you will, uh, you know, disclose that ending. But over here, I'm also emphasizing in reading so that you should know the proper ending. Okay. Okay. You should know that when there is a preposition, the ending should be with kasra. But the native will not say. No, no. They so how not. do we know non-native what they are saying it? No, <laughs> uh, if they know, if they know the rule, the grammar, they they mean fil masjidi. Okay. But again, believe me, I have heard Arab people speaking wrong. Mm. It's not according to the grammar. They say fi baitu. Fi baitu, right? It's very it should, common. Yeah, there are many Americans here yeah, speak wrong English. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But because we are learning Arabic for the Quran, our the objective Quran. is the Quran. Mm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not break any rule. <laughs> mm. Okay. Mm. So, and... Uh, it looks like very small thing, but when it comes to the meaning, it, it can change the meaning and a very drastic change in some uh, formations. So that's why we need to learn all these rules.